North Dakota, a state many people don't actually believe exists, has become the latest battlefield in the ongoing war between native peoples and big oil. Well, Native American tribes from both North and South Dakota are in Washington, D.C. now protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline. Now, as uncomfortable as it is to think about, it's worth remembering that this country was basically built on the back of a genocide of the Native Americans. We came, we stole their land, and then we killed off the vast majority of them. The ones we didn't kill, we signed a bunch of treaties with and then proceeded to simply ignore them. And by a bunch, I mean literally over 500. Fine, we did give them the reservations, but reservations is just a nicer sounding word for the shittiest land that we didn't really want. And as if that wasn't enough, we're now trying to build a giant oil pipeline through part of their sacred land in North Dakota. That land was given to them as part of an 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty. And naturally, the U.S. government just took it back nine years later. The pipeline will also cut through 200 rivers, creeks, and tributaries, carrying 570,000 barrels of oil a day. Now, considering the fact that July was the hottest month ever recorded ever, we should be weaning ourselves off of fossil fuels, not making it easier to consume more oil. Native Americans who are protesting the construction of this pipeline are actually doing the work that all of us should be doing. And this has been part of a larger trend around the world. Indigenous protests have been at the forefront of the environmental battle against fossil fuels. Native people protested the expansion of the tar sands in Canada and the Keystone Pipeline here in the United States. And in Ecuador, it was indigenous people that helped bring a multi-billion dollar lawsuit against Texaco and Chevron over oil pollution. Listen to our cries because our indigenous people are suffering to protect the land that you are living on. In North Dakota, the protesters claim that the pipeline would risk polluting the Missouri River, which they consider sacred. And their fears seem to be well-founded. Back in 2010, a pipeline burst near the Kalamazoo River in Michigan, dumping over one million gallons of oil into the river. The cleanup took years, cost over a billion dollars, and the Kalamazoo River may never be the same. Recently, in Ventura, California, a pipeline spilled hundreds of barrels of oil affecting the local wildlife. It was the second spill there since 2008, when over 200,000 barrels spilled, and 50,000 gallons spilled into the Yellowstone River last year. So yeah, this kind of thing happens all the time. There's a section in the National Historic Preservation Act requiring federal agencies to take into account the effects of their undertakings on historic property. Basically, before the government allows them to build a pipeline like this, they have to make sure that the land doesn't have some sort of cultural significance. Like, they would never build a pipeline through Monticello or Plymouth Rock or the Alamo or something. It's a total violation of the law, which emphasizes consultation with the tribes. Quote, consultation with an Indian tribe must respect tribal sovereignty and the government-to-government -government relationship between the federal government and Indian tribes. Now a judge is set to decide whether this pipeline violates the law. But let's face it, it wouldn't be the first time we conveniently ignored the law to screw over the Native Americans and the environment.